Hello everyone. So in this video, you will learn how to treat Amazon as a search engine so that you can increase your ranking through SEO, search engine optimization. We have a perfect expert for that. It's uh, Stephen Pope from uh, My Amazon Guy. He runs a full service agency for Amazon sellers and brands. And he will be uh, sharing his tips and recommendations. And before we continue, I wanted to mention that this uh, session is sponsored by few companies. Uh, first is uh, Getida. They help with FBA reimbursements and help you to claim money back, which is owned by, owed by Amazon to you. So check the link below in the description. Also, uh, Perpetua is sponsoring this uh, video and they have an e-commerce intelligence and advertising optimization uh, software and platform. So if you run advertising on Amazon, Walmart, check them out. Also, Unibrands is an FBA aggregator. They build and brands on Amazon and on Shopify. So if you have Amazon or Shopify brand, check them out, talk to them. Maybe they will acquire you. And then uh, Z is a full service solution for compliance, for customs, for logistics. It's a one-stop shop if you want to expand globally. Check the link below in the descriptions, uh, description. And finally, last but not least, Helium 10 is also sponsoring the session. It's an all-in-one suite for Amazon and Walmart sellers. Again, the link below in the description. This session, um, we will be, um, in this session, I will be hosting, or this session I will be hosting together with uh, Lisette. She works with different Amazon brands and hosts Orange Click videos. Hi, everybody. I'm very happy to have you, everybody, back here uh, watching our next session with Steven. So, hi, Steven. Hey, everybody. We're super glad you could join us today. So, before you start sharing all of those Amazon SEO secrets, could you first please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and let us know what you do in the Amazon space? Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. We're a 220 person agency to drive traffic and improve conversion rates on the Amazon platform. We have over 200 brands. We manage full service, all the account management, platform management, anything that you need to grow sales on Amazon and get you the peace of mind that everything's taken care of. So if your listing gets yanked, we're on it. So pleasure to be here, guys. Perfect. And you are known to share a lot of tips and tricks, uh, what works on Amazon and whatnot. So um, you have an awesome presentation for us. So let's go ahead and see what you have for us. Sounds like a plan. So uh, <laughs> I uh, am a big fan of search engine optimization, and I think it's one of the most misunderstood topics in the space. Uh, I like to think of myself as the number one thought leader in the entire Amazon space when it comes to search engine optimization to maximize content for traffic and conversion. So let's jump on into it. Uh, by the way, uh, those that are watching this live, I really do wanna take questions today. These can be off topic questions, anything Amazon related, it does not have to be related to the SEO topic today. Um, so if you got a burning question about Amazon, please feel free to write the question now so we spend plenty of time uh, getting to those questions today. All right, so bytes. Thank you, Steven, thank you. No problem. So bytes versus characters. <clears throat> this is the biggest news of 2022 as it relates to search engine optimization. I was the first on the market to break this as a news topic. And here's why it matters. If you don't follow this procedure, you are leaving 20% of your SEO juice on the table. At the time when I started talking about this uh, about eight weeks ago, nobody, no tool on the market, not a single one had this correct. All of them were wrong. All the SEO tools were trying to tell you that the search term field was capped at 250 characters. However, it's actually bytes. And what's the difference between a byte and a character? A byte doesn't count spaces. And anything on a character that has multiple uh, lines or like an N with a tilde over it actually counts as multiple bytes. 
So if you have Asian script, Chinese, Korean, or whatnot inside of a search term field, one of those characters could count as three bytes. But in terms of U.S. English, the search term field, if you were calculating 250 characters, there's about 30 extra letters you could have fit into your search term field. Who wants 20% more SEO juice today? I know I do, right? Like, so this is such a big deal um, and why I've decided to start the presentation on this because there's still many in the community that haven't heard this news. You can test this for yourself, by the way. Anybody that's got access to an Amazon account right now, you're welcome to pull up another screen, go into your inventory page, click on edit on any item and start typing letters in the search term field until the error message pops up and says, hey, don't exceed 250 bytes. And, and the help files from Amazon also back this up. So I uh, had a really viral LinkedIn post where I tagged all of the SEO tools, talked at length about this, took screenshots of how every tool was getting this wrong. I put the help files together to express this. And I've been trying to go out to the community to set the tone on this because it's the biggest thing um, since I proved A plus content indexes. So that's the biggest one. Um, we're going to go to the next slide here. So this is uh, an example of the error message on the bottom left. And here you can see it says, please reduce your uh, parent keyword angles. I can't even read it. It's so small. Length to less than 250 bytes. There we go. And, and so 250 bytes means they're going to ignore spaces. They also ignore syntax entirely, commas, colons, et cetera. So that doesn't count against you as well. And that ultimately is going to mean 20% more SEO juice, 20% more words to index in your search terms. So if you show up for 20% more words in Amazon.com, your sales are going to go up. Why? Because you're going to index for more words to begin with. The more words you index for, the more chances you're going to be seen. All right, so here's the challenge for you today. So I'm going to move off of the SEO bytes topic. And if any of you guys have questions and need me to clarify some of this content, please do feel free uh, to leave a comment on that. We'll go into some more detail there. A plus content, a really important indexing question. And so here's your challenge. For those that don't believe A plus content indexes, here is your challenge and homework. Now, this is a topic that I won more than three years ago, but it keeps resurfacing because there's a lot of rumors, a lot of false information out there. SEO is the most confusing topic on Amazon. So, so here's your challenge. Take one photo of your A plus content, it's alt text, and I want you to add Spanish this is going to work best in the U.S. market. And I promise you, it will index in about 48 hours. And if that's true, what does that mean? That means you should add 500 words of copy to your A-plus content. So those of you who don't have heavy copy amounts in your A-plus content right now, you're leaving sales on the table. Now, there's going to be a few people out there that are going to say, well, won't that hurt my conversion rate? Won't it look really terrible? on my mobile phone, absolutely, your conversion rate is going to go down. And that's good. That's a good thing. Why? Because it means your traffic went up. And it's significantly easier to grow your traffic than it is to improve your conversion rate. So if you think about a ratio on this, it's like 10 times easier to double your traffic than to double your conversion rate, 10 times. So if that's true, and SEO is really important, then it's more important than the design aesthetics and conversion rate. And you should actually be designing for SEO in mind, not for conversion, which means you need to put 500 words of copy into your A plus content. And that's going to help you index, that is, show up for more keywords. And you're going to see your ranking go up and increase. And that's going to, of course, lead to more sales. Now, of course, you want to do relevant keywords whenever possible. Extremely important. So here is an example of a photo's alt text. This is super technical. Um, any of you guys can replicate this very easily on your side today, though. If you go to Amazon.com, click on any product, 
go to the A plus content, right click any photo. So here's an example right here, this photo right here. And you can see the alt text code right there. And I have in the red here circled a Spanish word, which shows you I'm, I'm indexing for a Spanish keyword. Now, mind you, search volume 485, that's actually quite a bit, uh, quite a bit there. And when we added this, we indexed it ranked 174. Now, I'm not generating sales off a Spanish keyword. That's not the point, though. The point is you can do it yourself and prove it indexes within 48 hours. And if it's true with Spanish keyword, imagine if you did that with the English ones and the ones you're focused on. So now we're in, in indexed and organically ranked for set day, regalo para major. So here is uh, this product right here. And this, this product, by the way, is a mom box. I generated over $144,000 in four weeks with $11,000 in ads. 5,000 of that was spent on a single keyword, broad match gifts for mom. This is the keyword distribution for this product. And during Mother's Day, it will go even higher. There, there are more than 3,300 keywords indexed as of this moment. During Mother's Day of last year, it was 4,000 in the first four weeks. And, and so I'm in my off season right now. The product's actually soft at the moment, truth be told. Um, but, but during Mother's Day, it was a huge bomb, um, just completely took, the, took it by storm. I was indexing um, at one point within 48 hours of Mother's Day, I hit organic rank number one for the term gifts for mom. And that's a pretty big deal. The amount of sales that I generated off that was obviously helped me sell out of the product. So we're talking thousands of units uh, moving in a very short time period. So I share this because the key to my success was the indexing, all of the strategies that I've talked about today, building out A plus content with lots of copy and making sure it indexes leads to those kinds of sales. Um, so 3,300 organically indexed keywords leads to free traffic, 3,300 different search terms and possibilities that my product will be seen by Amazon consumers and shoppers. And then they click on the product and some of them will buy it, right? So that's kind of the goal here. Um, I've also had the number one ranked wine glass on Amazon until February 16th of 2021. So this one's a little bit more dated and older, but I like to show this because this is a real screenshot showing me organically slot one for wine glass. And I turned on my ad blocker so I could get the screenshot to like prove it was in slot one. And, and so in here, uh, I like to show this example because you have to still advertise even if you do well with SEO. And the relationship between SEO and PPC is kind of like a brotherhood, right? Like if, if you organically index and do well, and then you turn off your ads, you're going to fall off. And within uh, four weeks of this product being banned for ads, because it had the word drinking on the wine glass, um, which is a prohibited term because it promotes alcoholism, supposedly. I don't drink, by the way. And, and so within four weeks, it tanked. So I went from selling like 3,500 units a month uh, down to 1,200. And uh, today this product is about ready to be discontinued um, just because it's got banned from ads. Very, very hard to move a product without ads. So I like to share that to express like the connection between SEO and PPC's world. And, and it can be uh, very beneficial. So so this is the actual link to the product. You can you can still find it on Amazon. I, I still do sell it. Um, but, you know, it's kind of fun to show like how you can get products to the top of Amazon and take advantage of it. Uh, in its heyday, I indexed this product for nearly 7,000 keywords uh, to show you how impactful SEO can be for you. Uh, but even still without SEO, without PPC, the SEO will eventually fall off. All right, so what I recommend um, that you do is you spend at least 10% of your gross sales in ads to grow your brand. And quite frankly, it's probably closer to 11 to 14% today with PPC costs up 33%, but a minimum of 10 for sure. Uh, your top three keywords 
and your strike zone keywords need dedicated advertising campaigns. And this is important because they will help you matriculate the ranking. That is, go from position 20 through 50 and push up to the top of 1 through 10. And if you get into those top positions, that's where the real magic is. That's when you're at the top of the page. You're going to get the most clicks. Your CTR is going to be the highest. You're going to generate the most traffic. Um, so we have a lot of success stories on how we'll come in. So this is a smaller account. It was doing 4700 a week before we took it over. Within uh, a month, we were generating almost $14,000 a week. And you'll notice that we start the dates backwards from uh, oldest on the right to newest on the left there. So it went from 4,700, went all the way up to about 14,000 a week. Um, and so we obviously paid for ourselves on that account in less than a month. Uh, quote, I'm especially happy with the lower ad spend, lower A costs and higher ad revenue, all great signs. So those are things uh, that can happen when you take over an account. Uh, here are additional success stories, 50% growth on the left. And we launched one on the right with a Q4 launch with zero sales. And we took them to um, 300K in the month of December before they stocked out. Doubled sales for this one in two months. Went from 216,000 in August to 450K in September. Grew this one to $1 million from basically zero. I mean, it's a 40K. I got to give them some credit. Um, but we grew them $1 million in three months. Um, so... External Google rankings, we're going to start taking questions in a moment. So if some of the things I talked about have got your attention, start writing those questions now. So we get them, you know, first question in, first question answer kind of thing. So external Google rankings uh, can also be a factor. You've got parentages, you've got cultural waves, all kinds of things to think about. There's, there's other tools on the market that are fairly newer that can help you with some of these things. Uh, one of the cool tools I found out about at Prosper was Pixel Me. And you can take external traffic and pixel it essentially and track it from Facebook or Google into Amazon. That was pretty cool. Um, another thing is you could ride cultural waves. So for example, this wine glass uh, that I have in my hand here uh, says, this is the way. And this, this beer glass here, uh, obviously taking advantage of some Star Wars themes, right? And so, um, I, I designed the logo, right? There's no trademark on the phrase, even if there were, uh, was, um, typically sayings on funny glasses doesn't, doesn't cause a problem. And, and so if you take advantage of those cultural waves, whether it's Star Wars could have been chess sets, right? For when, uh, the Netflix series came out, chess sets went up 700%, uh, for six months when, when we had that really awesome, uh, chess Netflix series come out, Queen's Gambit. And, and so those cultural waves can definitely be beneficial. However, some are softly lived, right? If you're selling Ukraine flags right now, those, those are uh, probably not going to be a thing next month as they were previously, whereas like uh, became number one in all of outdoor three weeks ago. It's already not even in the top like 6,000 anymore. So, so cultural waves will come and go. There can be trendy things, stuff like that. Fidget spinners, another one that comes to mind. Um, but a great Amazon SEO strategy can equate to an improved SEO presence on Google as well. So you'll see here, uh, when you typed in, I'm not drinking alone, I'm social distancing. I came up with the shopping ad on the top left and in the very bottom left, um, I had was organically indexed on Google number one for that phrase. And, and so that's beneficial. And then when they click on the search results in Amazon, it was organically slot number one as well. So there's a lot of cool things you can do when, when you do these things. Um, here's some more cultural wave wine glass examples. So uh, because virtual teaching, grandma shark, this is the way, a bunch of other cool things that we've done with the silly, funny wine glasses. And this brings us to our questions and answers session. So let's jump in. I've got some friends here that are going to help me answer your questions and queue them up. Let's dive on in. Yeah, let's do it. So thank you very much, Stephen, for these tips. And I wanted to actually to mention that uh, this session is part of the Seller Fest online uh, uh, virtual summit. And uh, here we have 20 plus speakers uh, streaming live like this. 
besides these free sessions, which you can watch always, uh, in this link you will find the, the replay of uh, Steve's session. We also recorded with every speaker additional video, uh, and this additional content is uh, packaged into a VP package. You can find the link below. And uh, I wanted to ask uh, Stephen, could you give us an overview? What did you share in the additional video we recorded with you? So we're going to go into a lot more depth and going through some technical know-how so you guys can follow some of the best practices that we talked about. Um, but it's going to be extraordinarily specific. So you guys will have more of a VIP edition of how we go through that. We're going to go through all of the phases of SEO and go in depth and talk about the A9 um, SEO algorithm. We're going to talk about how all of these things integrate and work together and how the backend search term fields work and much, much more. So super excited to be a participant with SellerFest. You guys are putting on a great uh, group of people, a uh, great honeycomb of, of individuals right there. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, people uh, watching this uh, video, you will find the link below to VP package. As I mentioned, it's not only Stevens. Actually, Steven is uh, written at the very top. His session is mentioned at the very top. It was very important for us <laughs> to mention uh, advanced secrets of SEO. But there are lots of bunch of different worksheets, templates, uh, other experts are sharing. And uh, now I think we can move in, move on to the we, questions. Lisette, we have lots. Yes, we have lots of questions. So let's start with the first one from Jeff. So he's asking, does the text caption in Amazon Post index in search for Amazon to display posts? And does Amazon use SEO on the product detail page to display posts? So we don't have any definitive proof at this stage, but I suspect yes. And so, first of all, most of us aren't even doing Amazon social posts, right? Like, shame on us, right? <laughs> but, like, absolutely. If you've done your master keyword list and you know what you should be ranking for, cue those social posts up to get that content going. Also, don't hesitate to ask your consumers to send in photo content, right? If you give the consumers an incentive to post pictures on Instagram, hashtag your brand name, one of those ways you could do that is with like a product insert, right? So I actually uh, sent out a postcard to a bunch of Amazon sellers. Um, if anybody got one of these postcards, please post it in the comment section. We'll tell me if my marketing's working. And and so uh, I uh, I'm a big believer in in direct mail as well as a digital guy. But but in any case, if you created a product insert with your packaging and your product, and ask people, hey, I'll give you twenty dollar gift card to my website. All you got to do is go to Instagram, take a photo of you using my product and post it with my hashtag. This is a great way to crowdsource content, right? And also keep in mind, since we can't really ask consumers for reviews anymore, who's more likely to leave a review than the dude who took a picture of them using the product, right? And so you obviously get a lot of uh, benefits from doing that. So Jeff's a big fan. He follows me around uh, with a lot of content. So Jeff, thank you for your support and being a fan. Perfect. So uh, let's take another one from Jeff. So does SEO or keywords in the Amazon store index for organic search? Yes, but not on the Amazon platform at this time. It might very soon. The meta description that you set in the storefront actually is going to help you with Google. And that meta description, um, and I might, I might actually be able to demo this real quick, in fact. So uh, this is a really cool one. So I'm going to show on my screen here. Uh, if you type in right now, Momster into Google, you will see that my my website shows up, which is great. And I'm going to guess this link is going to go to my storefront. Sure enough, right? So so this storefront has a meta description, which can be seen. Um, and, and sometimes the meta description is overridden in the back end. Um, off screen right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my managed store page. I'm going to pull this up in a second right here. And in here, I'm going to click on edit on my store. And in here, um, you can go to the meta description in the store settings, scroll down and should be somewhere around here. Where did they stick it? So there's a there's a meta description that you can set on the back end, um, although I'm not being able to show it quite as fast as I was hoping on screen today. But essentially, if you set this meta description here, it's usually kind of a little bit easier when you show when you try and set up the store to begin with. 
Uh, maybe I could demo it on a brand I haven't. Yeah, here we go. Here's one I haven't set up yet. So this is a um, easy way to go to the store settings. And I'm still not seeing the meta description. They have it in the back end here. All right. Well, can't demo that one live. But in any case, what you set there will show up on Google and rank your, your storefront accordingly. Could it be that you have to choose the desktop view instead of the mobile? Sometimes they give different fields if you choose the other view. Not sure if it well, will help us. Well, yeah, it's not related to the, yeah, not related to the view. So on the back end, mm -hmm. um, there's when you first set up the store, there's a way to set the meta description. Uh, but I think it's it's just not showing it. Here we go. Here we go. Here it is. So if you hit edit page and right here. So if I was going to uh, try and write, this is for a brand new store that's not live yet. We're selling holsters. And, and so it's called host it. And so in here, after I do my keyword research, I'd come back here and I'd say, host your um, firearms and other uh, to keep them safe, you know, right? Something like that. And, and then put in additional keywords that I know from my master keyword list that would help me rank on Google. So this is where you would set that meta description for a brand storefront. This is not a topic I've covered probably more than two minutes in all of my thousand videos of content. So Jeff, I'm glad you asked it today. This is a this is a unique one we haven't really talked a lot about. And I learned a new English word, host. Uh, <laughs> never heard of this. Um, I name uh, I name all my brands and usually when I come up with them, most of my 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 partners, my friends, my family, and my employees tell me they're all terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so I came up with Monster, right? And it autocorrects to Monster Energy Drinks. Uh, and um, you know, I, I dealt with that challenge. I thought it was clever though. Was, I like short brand names, but mm -hmm. Holst it, right? Like it kind of sounds like Holstis uh, a little bit, but so dot com is available. So you know. So how like, do you, how do you respond to your relatives? Like, oh, terrible name, good sales. <laughs> oh, I just, I just, I just, truth be told, I'm just an asshole, and I just tell them they're all wrong. I, I I'm, not, I'm good at naming brands. <laughs> uh, related question: Ankit Sangar is uh, saying uh, A plus content slide. I think he's referring to that slide about A plus content. Can you give us yeah. uh, live examples? Absolutely. So let's turn on the screen share again. So this is my Age of Sage brand store. Um, some of my newest products, none of, um, most of my products in, in this are going to be from the fall or later. So let's go to my um, uh, some soaps here. So um, relatively new product, already well received, well reviewed. You can see lots of five star reviews. I don't do any review gen. All that's natural. As we scroll down. This is called the brand story section. Many of you watching this will not know what the heck this is. It's fairly new. And the easiest way to grow your sales today with a five minute hack would be to add a brand store module. And to do that, just go to the A plus content section and fill it in. It's super easy. It goes right above your A plus content. Here is a live A plus content. And what do you guys notice? Giant photo, lots of text. Giant photo. Lots of text, giant photo, lots of text, and repeated. Here we have down at the bottom a product module, which you want to do for average order value increases. So you can click on each product. Um, I was actually shooting a video last week. I noticed that I didn't have an exact match for cold press soap on my listing. And so I thought, what would be the easiest way to add that into my, in my, uh, my, my listing? And I said, well, I'll just throw it down in the product module because I haven't filled all those out yet. And boom, now I've got a cold press soap, which is in my mom box gift set, my masculine set. One of the funny things is, is we're actually um, looking for creative ways to use some of our leftover soaps. And we tried to melt it down using a crock pot. Did not work. Did not work at all. And so <laughs> we're actually looking for like a, uh, an industrial solution right now to take advantage of some of our leftover soap. We, have, we probably have 400 pounds of leftover soap from all the cold press soap um, cuts that we do, like the heels, if you will, right? I don't know if some of you guys have seen the Simpsons episode where they put all the heels together, <laughs> make a giant ball of soap. Uh, but uh, but yeah, same idea with that. So, so yeah, this is a live example of A-plus content. Take as much space up as you possibly can. Why? Because when you scroll down here, what do you see? Competitor products. We don't want that. You want to take as much space as possible so that they don't go down another rabbit hole. That's like three pages of scrolling that I just did. Now, does 500 words of copy look terrible on mobile? Absolutely, and that's a good thing.
Very good, perfect. So we do have another question here from Stuart. So if you have a multivariant listing, should you put all ASINs into an ad campaign or just the parent? Uh, thank you. So advertising is done at the child ASIN level. So you can't actually put the parent into an ad group. Now you can select the parentage and that would include all of the children in it. But to be clear, you don't ever send traffic to a parent listing. It always goes to the children. Now, with that in mind, I generally recommend that you put 80% of your budget under one variation. Why? Because 80% of your sales come from one variation. And so if you uh, muddle or uh, muddy up, rather, the amount of traffic that you're advertising on to multiple ASINs, it will actually hurt your sales and it will go down. Keep in mind that a, a bestseller listing, the better that one ASIN does, the better all are going to do accumulatively. Um, this is a strategy of breadth over depth or depth over breadth, right? You got to pick which one works best for you. If you're selling clothing, it's harder because your, your, your variations will split your traffic and your sales. And so you generally want one power skew. One power skew ranks for more keywords higher up in the SERPs, which leads to more sales. So 80-20, that rule. Could you put 5, 15, 20 variations into one ad group? You can but it's not the most cost-effective way to do it. You should segment that out. Put one bestseller, 80% of your budget, 20% on the rest. All right, we have a question from Lear. He says, I'm sorry, I don't understand what is the 500 copy words. I think you mentioned this when you talked about- Yeah, put, put me back on screen with the screen share. Yes. This is exactly what we're talking about. 500 words of copy directly into the A plus content right here. There's 500 words of copy. Why? Because it indexes your content faster when you put copy into the A plus content. So, Lior, hopefully that answers your question. Let's see, next question from Sunny Girl. Where do you see the rankings? Is it like plugin or browser app to for Amazon? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, there are many tools on the market. The one that I like to use is Helium 10. And, and so you can use a tool um, like Cerebro to come in and, and see what the rankings are. So we just click on a keyword drink button like this. It's gonna take us over to uh, Cerebro. Um, again, there, there are more than 20 tools in the market that can do something similar to this. You don't have to use Helium specifically, but I am a big fanboy. Um, and then here you can see the keyword distribution. This shows how many keywords are being advertised on and how many are organically indexed. I usually like to see a one to two ratio on sponsored keywords to organic. And so right now I'm being a little bit more aggressive than that one to two on my sponsor keywords, which tells us that there's probably um, either too much ads being spent or not enough organically um, keywords indexed. And in my case, I know it's, I know it's the ads because I'm being aggressive. And then on the right hand side, you can see the organic rank of any particular um, keyword. So handmade soap for women, 811 search volume. I'm organic slot number one. And there are dozens and dozens of keywords that were at the top of page one four, which can be very, very beneficial. All this is publicly crawlable data, by the way. And, and so you can you guys can see what I'm up to if you want by going to Amazon.com slash age of sage and click on some of my products. You are so open with your products. Uh, I, I am. And by the way, it leads to products getting attacked and, and all kinds of challenges. So mm -hmm. the, the social distancing wine glass, I did a, a big um, blitz of podcasts in January and February of 2021. And I was talking about my wine glass being organic number one. And then after I did a really big presentation um, for one of the big names out there within 48 hours, it got banned. And I, I'm confident those two are directly related. So, so yes, is there a fear? Should you have a fear to put your product out there? Yes. Yes, you should. Do I have a fear? No. Uh, I have no fear chromosome inside of me. And my philosophy is I'm just going to keep giving good out to the world and, and it'll work out. No worries. All right. One more question from Kevin George. If you have keywords in the search field, do you need to put them again in the bullet points? Which social media platform is the best for ranking? Two questions. So, so the reason, um, and, and this is where you're going to need the VIP session on this topic, because I actually go into great detail talking about how to run through multiple phases of SEO. So during phase one, it's all about indexing but as you progress into phase three you need to matriculate the keyword rankings and so you're going to actually inc include 
multiple references to keywords depending on which phase of SEO you're in. And, and the reason for that is so you can rank them as technically high as possible. Um, Kevin, uh, in terms of social media platforms uh, for, for best for ranking, um, I don't think anybody has definitive uh, knowledge on that topic. Um, we, we know that Amazon and Facebook butt heads. We know that Google and Amazon butt heads and all of that. Let's see if I can get my camera focused here back. There we go. And, and so we know that certain, um, like, like is TikTok going to help your Amazon? Not for, not for SEO, but if you get a run and you do a video and it goes viral and you generate a bunch of sales, obviously that will help you for SEO, right? But like general um, casual posting, um, it's going to be minimal uh, in the grand scheme of things compared to what you can do within the Amazon platform. Okay, very good. Uh, so let's have a next one from here. So how does Amazon index keyword search terms in a product title? Does A9 algorithm read it from left to right or can it read from right to left as well? Uh, so that both ways get indexed on Amazon, if you know that. So a couple of years ago, the title used to be um, more important left to right. That, that used to be the case. But today it's irrelevant. So the algorithm is smarter. They've patched that. It's more an improve. Regardless of your search term field, regardless of your title, the location of the keyword no longer matters contextually, um, with one minor exception. The first five words of your title can set the canical URL or has more relevancy to set the canical URL. Um, this is a super technical thing, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this one as well. So if you want to screen share again. Um, the canical URL in the very top of my browser here is these words right here, right after Amazon. So fruity scent, natural soap, women, five words. Where did they get that from? Right here. Fruity scent, natural soap, women. And um, and they, they ignore the word bar and four. Now, you can set the canical URL manually by, by ticketing. Uh, but one of the fastest ways to do it is just simply throw a dash on right after some of the first five words in the title, and it will set that for you. So, so in general, does it matter if soap bar is, you know, um, in the front of the title or later? No. Does it matter if I said bar soap or soap bar? No, that doesn't matter either. However, exact match keywords do better and are highly recommended. So when we look at the Cerebro results and let's say I'm going to try and work on the strike zone keywords, which is rank 20 through 50. And I want to pull up some keywords that are in rank 20 through 50 and push them up to rank one through 10. And we see handmade soap. I'm in position 20 for that. Well, let's go to my listing. Do I have an exact match for handmade soap? Survey says, I do not. That would be the most important thing that I do is get an exact match for handmade soap into my listing to help it rank better on that specific term to try and go up from rank 20 to rank 1 through 10. Okay, very good. So Joe has another question. So for your alt text on images, does each image get its own keywords or are they all the same? I, I imagine it's about A plus content then. Yeah, each photo uh, can have its own alt text. So if I were to demonstrate that and uh, go ahead and share screen again. So in the bottom of A plus content right here, you can set the alt text for each of these individually. So if you hit inspect, here's the alt text of that photo. Woman deep, sea, goats, milk, squash. Sounds really weird, I know. Okay, close that out. We'll go to the next one. Right click, inspect, same thing, alt text. Rum, bulk, deodorant, shampoo, pine, tar, conditioner. Very, very different keywords than the first photo example. So you can set those all uniquely depending on. Perfect. So another one from Rana. So what is the number one, two, and three places to put keywords? Uh, so probably what is the, uh, is it in the title, bullets, bullet points, or description, for example, and which match is the best exact phrase or broad? So basically, is there any difference where do you put the keywords exactly in, uh, in your product detail page? So the title is the most important. There is no question about that. Search term field, probably a close second. However, um, in the title, exact match is more important. In the search term field, uh, you do not need an exact match because they permutate the keywords uh, throughout. However, um, through our testing, depending on what phase of SEO we're working on, sometimes we'll do go for the broad, other times we'll go for the exact. 
So if I'm working on SEO phase three and I'm looking on um, a specific strike zone keyword, I'm going to go for the exact match in every field. Um, but if I'm working on phase one and it's a product launch or it's in its infancy or it's an immature listing, I'm going to go for broad match almost all day long. Same concept of advertising, cast a wide net, get wider results. But when you're trying to go for that strike zone and work for specific keywords, you want to narrow that focus down and go for exact match. So bullets are not as important as title and, and search term field. Um, a plus content is probably uh, the most underrated and most misunderstood. Uh, and then anything besides those four fields are way towards the bottom of, of impact uh, in comparison. But in the VIP session, we go through the A9 algorithm and we go step by step. So if you want more information, be sure to uh, subscribe for that. We'll go talk you all the way through that full experience of the A9 algorithm in every single field. All right, good. Um, we have still lots of questions, at least 10. So uh, next one is uh, about honeymoon. Oh, OK, it was already uh, activated. What's your view strategy on the honeymoon period? Do you forward date to your do you forward date your launch date to tie in with stock arriving? Absolutely. If you launch a product before it goes live, in every optimized fashion possible, you are leaving sales on the table. So I'm going to show you guys um, where you can edit these fields. Uh, so if you want to bring up my screen. So if you go into the offer page section, there is a field right here says offer start date. So you'll notice that we set this into the future. Additionally, if you go to the more details section um, and you go down to launch date, We've also set that and we're going to fill in release date. Um, it's a little confusing to explain the difference but between these three. I think the definition is irrelevant. Just set them all to the future. And when your listing is ready, a la it has its A plus content, a la the main image is optimized, right? So this is a new product I'm coming out with. When you click on it, what do you see? The lost dogs page, right? And that's a good thing. That's a good thing because you don't want it to index until your product is live. It has inventory, it's got stock, the description is filled out, the A plus content and the bullet points are filled out completely on all of these things, right? So these are all important things that need to be done in advance. And I absolutely use the launch date. Is the honeymoon period a thing? Absolutely. Whenever you're wondering a question, one of the best things you can do is type in the problem like this into Google, type in my company name, my Amazon guy, you're going to see over a thousand videos that show up. So this video right here, Amazon FBA honeymoon product launch, myth or fact, I cover this question in detail and I go through each of those fields and I explain how that all works. So feel free to check that out after today's session. Uh, Steven. Oh, sorry. Steven is a master of SEO, makes video about every little keyword. And if you guys ask a question I haven't done a video about, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go answer that in a video. <laughs> All right. So uh, the when we take one question, the number of questions left are increasing. I don't know this math, but we that's, have 11 questions left now, 13. <laughs> so, that's good. All right. Keep them coming. Good. Uh, Hazib is asking, uh, product title and bullet points help in keyword indexing or not? Yes, absolutely. Title, most important. Bullets, a little bit softer um, in comparison. Uh, but uh, you, should, you should act as if an exact match keyword in any location on your listing can help you because it can. Right. Next question is from Omeon. I am messaging all relevant keywords in the listing. Uh, and A plus content, no improvement in organic rank with, within four months. I have twice less organic keywords versus my main competitor. What's wrong? So when you're massaging keywords in and you're not getting traction, it's usually not the optimization that's the problem of the copy. It's the product main image and it's the price of the product. You're not turning enough units. That's just bottom line. In the case, if you've done all of the things we've talked about in today's video and you're not having results, it's because your conversion stinks. You're probably having under an 8 or a 9% conversion rate. 
you're not moving enough product. And so Amazon is not going to show your product or rank it or matriculate it if you aren't moving product. I do ASINT reviews all the time where we'll go through and try and ascertain and figure out whether a product has an SEO problem, a PPC challenge, or where the opportunities are. Um, so if you guys want to post an ASIN, I'm happy to do an ASIN review if we have time today. Very good. Uh, I yeah. just wanted to mention that if somebody is really enjoying uh, Steven's advices, don't forget to click below the like button below this video and subscribe to the channel. We will for sure invite Steven again. He knows how to deliver. We know how to bring him <laughs> and uh, we will connect the dots. All right. Very good. Yeah, let's go with the next question then. Uh, what is the strategy if a product collected bad history in the past uh, five, six months? Uh, very low sales, but now you have done good keyword research. So how should we change it and how long would it take to show results? So bad history in the past six, five to six months means that you have had a low conversion rate sustained for a lengthy period of time. Now, sometimes people ask this question and follow it up with, should I delete my product and start over? Absolutely not. There is not even a 1% chance that you should delete your product and start over. How, and, and that's because you have reviews, you have history. So don't just throw the baby out with the, the bathwater, so to speak. What you're going to want to do, though, is you're going to want to revamp the listing, redesign it, change the main image, run some A-B tests, lower the price to below break even and start turning units. Sustain that for two weeks, you will reset everything on your listing. You can start raising the price back up and you'll see different results. This does require a significant amount of investment from a PPC as well, um, so be prepared for that. But, but in terms of, of, of a listing that's festered for a long period of time, SEO will be insufficient to help regain the tracking. PPC will be the fundamental key to success as well as design, not SEO. SEO is a strategy that's good for long-term investments, but not for turnaround projects. You all need to do SEO. You all need to invest in your future. But when it comes to what's going to bring in sales tomorrow, the answer is almost always pay-per-click advertising. Okay, very good answer. Thank you. Uh, so let's take another one from George. Uh, do all the words in the A plus content get indexed? Yes. Um, so that's why you want to take advantage of putting 500 words in there. Um, the alt text all gets indexed. The copy all gets indexed. Um, I do see rumors from time to time talk about how bullet points have a cap of number of characters that they will index. I haven't been able to confirm that. Um, there's no way to confirm that in the APIs one way or another. Um, but to be safe, maybe that fifth bullet point put the least valuable stuff. That um, that would be the one thing. But in terms of A plus content, you're good to go. Go ahead and chalk it full up, the, up there. And uh, I see that in the private chat, uh, you shared with us, uh, let me activate this link, uh, myamazonguide.com so, ASIN review. Can you comment on this? Yeah, so if, because that, that individual is asking, hey, what's what do I do with my listing? And because we can't see it, one of the things that I do as a service, we just launched this page um, I have it up on screen. It's to give away free ASIN reviews. So we'll go into your listing for five to 10 minutes and we'll look at all of the PPC to SEO ratios. So if you guys want to check that out, just type into your browser, myamazonguy.com slash ASIN. It'll pull up this page. Um, and yes, we're going to market you after we send you a free video that we analyzed your listings for. Uh, but you'll want to be marketed by us because we're going to give you a bunch of free advice. Um, we'll talk about the market share, the design, the conversion opportunities, traffic, and much more. Great. Lots of good content. We have more comments. Uh, should a client be worried that you got your own product shut down by Amazon? How do I know the same one happened to me? <laughs> so so to be clear, you got to know the Amazon TNC, right? And how, how do you know that the same won't happen to you? I guarantee the same will happen to you. Like everybody that's on this chat right now is going to have a suspended product by Amazon. Like <laughs> I mean, like it just happens to everybody. Why? Because Amazon uses robots to crawl pages and 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 do things right now. And certain categories are significantly safer than others, right? Home goods, giftable items, outdoor, 
you're not going to have a lot of banned products or suspended products. But to be very clear, um, my account has never been suspended ever. Doc on wood, right? <laughs> and then, uh, and then I have never had a suspended product. I've had suspended advertising. And so Corinne, the point that I was trying to make is if you put the word drinking on a wine glass, which I didn't know was a prohibited term at the time, quite frankly, it probably wasn't when I launched the product. At a later point, Amazon clarified its policy and updated it and started banning products with the word drinking from advertising, right? So I wrote out a product and made a couple hundred thousand dollars on that one product. Would you like to have a, a couple hundred thousand dollars in net profits from a product and then have it banned and be okay with it? I think you might, Corinne. I think you might. So take some risks. That is the nature of the platform we, we have. Amazon is a customer-centric platform. They do not care about you as a seller in any regard. Not even like 2% care about you as a seller. That's my job security. That's why my Amazon guy exists, right? We go out of our way to help with that. Uh, but, but yeah, even Amazon experts deal with these terms and services issues, these listings, uh, challenges, restrictions, problems, all that stuff. Very common. As I say, the number of questions are increasing. We still have uh, 14 questions left. <laughs> I'll speed up my answers. All right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. It was a hint. Um, how do you add key phrases to the backend search terms as a sequentially, or can we add the word separately? Great question. So during SEO phase one, it, you, you do not want to add duplicates and you do not want to add commas. And so the way that this question was phrased makes me think that they were going to put a phrase, comma, phrase, comma, phrase, comma. Don't do that. Don't put duplicates. Don't put commas in phase one of SEO, which we'll go into much more detail in the VIP session. You want to have just the, the, the run on series sentence and reference all of those keywords. Um, so does it matter if it's in the front end of the search terms or the back end? It does not. They're all 100% equal weighting. Perfect. Uh, one more question uh, in the line. Hozam. I hesitate between Jungle Scout and Helium 10, and Cerebro is a functionality which doesn't exist in Jungle Scout. I'm surprised. I didn't know. Which one is better for a good search ranking? Taking both is a good idea. I started my journey on Amazon on Jungle Scout. I have a special place in my heart for them. But without a doubt, Cerebro is the most powerful keyword software on, on, on online right now. There's nothing that touches it even remotely close. I do think that if there is a company that is going to take out Helium 10 or, or at least put a chip on their shoulder, so to speak, uh, that probably made no sense metaphorically. But I think it's going to be Carbon 6. Uh, those dudes have just been going out and buying every software on, on the market. They bought Zon Tools. They bought AMZ Alerts. They bought... Uh, a ton of stuff, uh, uh, trying to remember all of the ones that they've bought, so many of them, seller app or something. Um, and so I know Trey Johnson's app just got bought. So, so if there's somebody that's going to develop a powerful keyword software that's going to catch up, it's probably going to be Carbon6. Um, but on the market, there's 20 to 50 different keyword tools right now. They're all good at one or two things. Um, some tools like Zonguru, they have a backend search term, keywords on fire function. Um, but no tool on the market can give you as many keywords indexed with a button click and without additional work. That's why I use Helium 10 and all of my staff does. And I am a trusted partner of Helium 10. They don't pay me to say these things, though. <laughs> okay, very good. So let's go to the next one. So what does strike zone keywords mean, which you mentioned during your presentation? So strike zone keywords are in rank 20 through 50 on a listing. Um, so this is organic slot 20 through 50. These are the words in SEO phase three, which the VIP session covers. We're going to go into a lot more detail, but essentially you want to move those keywords up to position one through 10. So they're in the strike zone. They haven't developed yet. There's an opportunity to develop them with minimal amount of effort. You can move them up to positions one through 10. Okay, perfect. So don't miss Steve's uh, VIP session. Uh, so Angelica is asking, how many keywords do you suggest to put in one ad group? And do you think keyword dumping is good? So this question came up at the Prosper show. I was on a panel with four other PPC experts. I was the only one to say that it's okay to put more than five keywords into an ad group. All of the others on the panel said one to five. I think one is overkill and less done in sparingly. Um, and I think anywhere from 
you know, three to 20 should be the typical average of a campaign. Um, so, but in general, the more keywords you add, so if you add 15 or 20 keywords to a campaign, I guarantee you that 20 to 30% of those ca campaign keywords are not going to get impressions, at least not as many as they could if you segmented them out. And that's, and that's the reason is because Amazon's going to prioritize what they know or believe is going to work. So if you have too many keywords on a campaign, you, you heard this comment, you're like, oh, crap, what do I do? Don't take out the good keywords from the current campaign. Take out the ones that don't get the impressions currently and put them into their own to see if they can develop. Never, ever, 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 Steve Carell, never, ever take a good keyword off of a current campaign that is working. Just don't do it. Don't negate good keywords off your auto campaigns. Don't negate good keywords off your broad campaigns. And definitely don't take a keyword that's got hundreds of sales off of whatever campaign it's on. Just don't. Leave it alone. Campaigns that have keywords that aren't getting impressions, they're onesie twosie sales, move those off if you feel like isolating them out. But don't move off good ones. Thanks. Uh, we have uh, lots of other questions. Uh, Rana wants to know, should we repeat our main keywords in the title, bullet points and search terms? Yes, during phase three of SEO. Next question, Joe, are you ever going to change your company name to Magma, my Amazon guy management agency? <laughs> so I have filed a, a legal name that is not my Amazon guy because I'm fully prepared that one day Amazon will say, hey, Stephen, you have to change your brand name. Uh, but to be clear, I made my company before they got their trademark. So I feel like I have some legal safety, uh, believe it or not. But uh, I'm going to coattail off using the word Amazon for as long as possible until they make me remove it. Great or not great. Uh, <laughs> one, one more question from Tony. Uh, have you got well, actually talking about great? So M-A-G also means uh, make America great in U.S. So sometimes <laughs> people probably make Amazon great. Have you gotten a second honeymoon uh, by deleting the listing and relisting? So, Tony, I did um, talk about how you should. there's less than a 1% chance you should ever do this. And that's because you have the ability to recover a listing. You do not want to give away all of the keywords you already have indexed on. So um, a, a listing that's 6, 12 months old typically will index for more than 1,000 keywords. Why would you give that up? The honeymoon period takes a minimum of 30 days to get up to that recovery, right? And that's, that's like with an average launch. So I was able to get my mom box up to 4,000 keywords in 30 days, but that's unheard of. It's unprecedented. It usually not, does not happen. So deleting a listing, typically not the right move. Okay, very good. Thanks. So Paul is asking, what are the main SEO opportunities you're looking for when targeting top 10 sellers in your niche? So I'm going to take the keywords that they all consistently rank for in the top 10, and I'll create a master keyword list, and I'll look for... Uh, maximum exposure. This is during, you know, kind of phase zero and phase one of SEO that we run. Um, later on, though, I'm going to look for keyword gap analysis where I'm going to compare my listing against theirs to say, what words do they index for that I don't index for? Or what words do they all consistently rank higher up for that mine doesn't rank higher up for? And you're going to do some compare and contrasting when do a keyword gap analysis. Okay, perfect. So Keith is asking, what is considered to be a good uh, click-through rate and conversion rate? So CTR typically is going to be tracking for advertising. 0.3 is generally the consensus average, so anything above 0.3 in most categories. Um, I think Celix, uh, which is an advertising tool, has a really good benchmark report out for that, um, and I cover I cover that in another video, but. Um, if you want to know how you're benchmarking against another category, that's one of the tools I would check out to see how that see how you're doing. Conversion rate eight to twelve percent most categories, but some are higher or lower. If your conversion rate is north of twenty percent, you are leaving sales on the table. What does that mean? You need to spend more on ads. Yeah, talking about uh, Celix Benchmark, we also had a few videos with them about this tool. So you can check our YouTube channel and maybe if you're watching replay, you should find these links below in the description. And we have a few more questions. Uh, best organic strategy when launching wants to know, Parmit. Optimize every single field before you launch. End of story. That's the best strategy. 
And short question from Lior. Is there a limit for A plus words? No more than 500? Um, I think that the limit might be more like 5,000. I just wouldn't do it. I think 500 maximizes your returns. Um, I don't actually know the official answer on that question, truth be told, but I'm sure that each module has a character limit. Another short question. Does image name also help with SEO? If yes, how do you name your images? We don't know for sure if this helps or not. There is speculation that it might. Um, and so the way that I would name it is not photo one, photo two. I would put your best keywords into the naming conventions of your photo. Do I personally go out of my way to name my photos when I load them? I do not. I don't really care. And I yep. see that, uh, yeah, actually, I just saw that Lori, Lior said uh, thanks for the previous answer. You're welcome. <laughs> Very good. So um, Rana is asking uh, that you were asked uh, last Friday during the live se session. I believe it it could be yours. Yes, uh, it is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, so can we get conversion rate of the competitors? Uh, we can check it by going to Product Opportunity Explorer and then go move forward from there. So basically, the question is: Can sellers get somehow the conversion rate of their competitors? So. I struggled to find that live during the last Q and A. Um, so let's let's follow his suggestion here. So product opportunity explorer, and then go to the search the main keywords. And I do remember that. All right, so we're in the brand analytics uh, brand dashboard. Let's go to the brand dashboard. Maybe that's where it is. Product opportunity explorer. Um, I forget where they stick it. So not in there. Products. Uh, I'm not going to be able to pull this off fast enough for the sake of a live session, but there. But I, I believe Rana is correct. You're going to be able to come in here and look at the Product Opportunity Explorer and show that. Sounds like I need to brush up on this one though. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, so another one: Does capitalization of some words on title and bullet points affect the product's uh, indexation? Not to my knowledge. Um, proper case does not impact it. How, however, however, I have seen in two instances that listings were suppressed for using all caps and bullet points. I have seen that. Uh, it was in the sports category specifically, both times. And it seems like people are really happy about your answers. Rana says, uh, oh, Rana says it's in growth. It's that in one. growth. All right. Yep. Okay. That's, I, I, did, I did that. It's a new module. All right. Here we go. So inside of growth, here's the product opportunity explorer. I haven't looked around this category for about two months. So in here, let's say we're going to go into liquid black soap. We'll just click on that. In here, we can see search terms. And right here, search volume growth, click share, and conversion rate. So this guy is getting a 5.7% conversion rate off of authentic African black soap right there. So this particular product, here's the search term, there's the conversion rate, top three clicked positions. So Rana, I really appreciate that. Sounds like I need to do another video um, on the product opportunity explorer conversion rate because you're talking about it a lot. All I'll right. Uh, last few questions. Do many clicks on a product bring it to the homepage? Uh, no, sales bring it to the homepage. So the more product sales you get, the better off you're going to be. Another question, during the launching period, which ads do you recommend? Sponsored products should be 90% of your budget. Um, video ads, definitely 10 or 15%. And then that last 5%, I might test with some headline ads, depending on the product type. Display is higher in the funnel, should generally not be done on a product launch. However, I've tested it many times, hoping I was wrong. Never has worked, however. Okay, very good. So we have another question from Keith. So is there a way to estimate PPC bids before deciding on a product? How accurate are suggested bids by Amazon? So suggested bids are going to generally take you to the top four to eight positions in sponsored products. Um, it's going to be run of the middle, middle of the road. So if you want to be in the top four, you're going to have to increase your bid for whatever the suggested bid is. Um, I'd say they're fairly accurate. Uh, some categories are more competitive than others. Some don't have the search volume, which is why prices are higher. If it's really competitive, there's more products than their search volume. You'll see prices go up even higher. That's capitalism 101. Um, but, but in terms of estimating before deciding on a product, absolutely. 
what you could do is take any one of your campaign creations, just make a draft and, and add a random product and see what the suggested bids are on a product. Um, there probably are tools as well that can show you the suggested bids, uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not aware of one off the top of my head. We have a few more questions. So the next one is, uh, can being on the top uh, of the page one be a game changer instead of a middle of yes. page one? Yes. <laughs> I asked because uh, I went from 130, 150 units sold on my product when launched at the top one, maybe one day, now months later. One yes. No. So, so see if, if you had um, a number one seller badge or a new release badge that was helping you during that time period, or if you jumped in the honeymoon period up in the top 10 uh, results for particular high volume keywords, absolutely. That's going to happen. So Amazon will test products, but then over time, after they test you, if you're not um, doing as well as a competitor is convert converting um, better than you, then you're going to lose those search rankings. So if you raised your prices or the main competitor lowered theirs or your main competitor has a better click through rate and a better conversion rate over time, you're going to lose those rankings. So, yes, being at the top of page one, significantly more important, which is why you want to rotate your keywords. So there's a theme today that I haven't said out loud. That is SEO is not set it and forget it. You want to continuously optimize and continually work on it. Because if you do, you'll get to the top of page one more and more often for more keywords. Three more last questions. Uh, one is from Joe. J Thanks for all the info, Stephen. How often do you change uh, up your SEO? You just answered it, or do you just leave it alone until it doesn't Ro work anymore? I'm sorry. Rotated every 30 to 90 days, which is yeah. probably four times more a year than most people do it. <laughs> And Parmit wants to know, will the clicks from bots and competitors burn my PPC budget? So this is not one I feel very qualified to answer. I'm aware that there's concerns about false PPC advertising clicks. Um, I think the concern level is minimal or low. I think Amazon's sophisticated. But if you ever catch something, you can always ask Amazon to review it and ask for a reimbursement, especially if you see a spike of one kind or another. Have I ever personally witnessed this across 500 accounts? I have not. I see that uh, before I said last three questions and we still have six questions. As I said, it's a very wrong lightning, math. Li lightning around. All right. 60 seconds. <laughs> yeah. no. So Sangyol wants to know, is uh, going with Amazon to do display ads a good idea? Will I get great return at low cost? No. A lot, no. The <laughs> minimum ad spend requirement for uh, sponsor, what is SD? Sponsored display. Display. Um, but they're, they're probably actually talking about DSP. Um, so, so display inside of Seller Central has no commitments. And if you're going to test it out, start there. But until you spend fifty thousand dollars a month on ads, don't touch DSP. It's not worth it. Uh, the commitments are too high. The risk is too high. It's too high on the funnel. Now, if you if you're selling um, household name brands, go at it. But if you're selling no name brands that you're launched on Amazon out of your garage absolutely shouldn't be touching it. Display is just too high in the funnel for most brands. Now, retargeting, remarketing, selling to past purchasers, those things I would test before targeting, say, newly married couples or just bought a house categorization changes inside of display. Okay, very good. So somebody's asking, can I use Google Shopping ads for Amazon products? Yes, uh, I've, I've done it myself. Um, check out Pixel Me. It will help you do that. Perfect. And track it. So let's go to the next one then. How often do you change your search terms? Uh, 30 to 90 them? days. Okay, keywords the same thing. Very good. Good, short, sweet answers. Next one. How to get product recommended on Amazon sent mail emails? There's no way to do that. Uh, back in the day, I, so I'm an OG Amazon seller, right? I used to work with account managers. I was one of the first people to get access to PPC. I was selling rice cookers for two cents a click back in the day. <laughs> like OG PPC, man. <laughs> Um, there is no way to get into an Amazon email that, um, that they're not sending personalized. For example, if you click on a product and Amazon sends you a generic retargeting email with a personalized thing you've looked at, that can happen. There's nothing that you can do as a seller to increase your probabilities of getting email marketed by Amazon, however, in any shape or form.
Okay, very good. So we have one very interesting question. So first, thanks for great answers. So say you're alone on an island, would you go for a Mexican Coke or a Chipotle burrito? Chipotle burrito, 100%. So I always joke on my channel about when people uh, join the channel and or donate that they're buying me a Chipotle burrito or a Mexican Coke, which I've got right above me on my shelf here. So I uh, appreciate all the support, Mom, and, and many of the other super fans out there. Thank you. Okay, very good. So we have a few more here. So Keith, how do you decide which category to list on? Some products fit into more than one and they fit into subcategories. If you're really struggling this badly with it, flip a coin. Um, category does not have very much impact with some exceptions, right? If you were going to sell in a category that was scientific, I wouldn't touch that one. Like just don't, don't do scientific. If you were trying to sell an item that could be in books or home goods, don't do books. Books will not allow you to advertise in many instances. Um, so, so selecting like death categories versus good categories, obviously there's cut and dry answer on that one. But if you're trying to select between two good categories, then flip a coin. It really doesn't matter. Honestly, it will have no impact on your sales. Okay, good. So does the Amazon algorithm work in the same manner in all marketplaces? No, it absolutely does not. The reason I know this is because the UK is always three to five years behind the US market. So things that worked in the US five years ago will probably still be the standard in other marketplaces or up and coming ones, Brazil, Japan, Australia, you name it, India, they are completely different. Okay, perfect. And two more. So for the A plus content images, do you personally recommend having big image, big images than those 300 times 300 or 220 times 220? So I'm going to answer your question by taking it to a macro level. Take as much space as you possibly can. Now, if you think using modules that have smaller photos takes as much takes as much space as my modules with big photos, let me tell you, big photos will take more space. So take as much space as you possibly can. Now, does it make sense to diversify and you really need to show a four uh, a four photo module? You know, do whatever's right for your product, right? You might need to show like step one, two, three, four. Do what's right for the product in terms of the imagery and the design. But at the end of the day, take as much space up as you possibly can. Okay, good. And now the last question for today. So if uh, everybody are enjoying the content and information Stephen is sharing, then definitely like this video and we will invite Stephen on our channel again. So the last one, how do you address Google Shopping ads to Amazon? So you can, you can just generically set up um, Google ads to go directly to Amazon, but you, but you may need to have um, a tool to do certain types of ads and then a tool to track certain types of ads. So, uh, Sam, I, I suspect you're wondering how do you connect the merchant center over into Amazon? And for that, that may not actually be possible. You may not be able to do that specific ad type, but text ads and many of the others should be kosher and you should test them out. Banner wants to. Thank you very much, Stephen. I see people are really happy uh thanks a lot guys it's my pleasure to be out here today um i like to i like talking yeah. to the community you guys give me lots of great ideas so i appreciate everything you guys do to support and um thank you lisette thank you steven see you later probably thank you <laughs> and uh, oh by the way one more time steven how do you help amazon sellers it's important to mention my amazon yeah, guy so so I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. We help Amazon sellers grow their traffic and improve their conversion rates, full account platform management, everything from SEO, PPC, design, catalog management, um, to make sure that you have peace of mind and don't have to worry about anything in your Amazon platform. So check us out at myamazonguy.com. It'd be my pleasure to um, see what we can do to add value to your accounts. And the link below, the link you to my Amazon guy you will find below in the description. Thank you, Lisette. Thank you, Stephen. Bye bye. And now I would like to invite you to watch other video about SEO, where Pratik from DataHawk is sharing uh, some tips how to boost your margins with Amazon SEO.